okay this is a pre-recorded um video because it might take a little while um i'll edit it as much as i can to try to make it as painless as possible i'm going to um show how to uh, paint a covered bridge all right um before i do that i had to explain something to you so let me pan back a little bit there you guys should be able to see them okay in doing any type of structure um that has a rectangular or square shape to it and uh, and you want to paint it and keep it about as accurate as you possibly can you're going to have to use perspective um whether you do it the way i do it or some other method still perspective is required okay so that your painting doesn't look like one of those Van Gogh paintings where you know stuff's supposed to come at you and it looks flat going straight downward or whatever. It's a lack of perspective and it just quite frankly don't look right if you're trying to represent um, a house, a building or whatever. This uh, um, picture, uh, I'll pencil um, a sketch of a, of a covered bridge. Okay. Um, I am looking at a photograph um, of a particular covered bridge. It is an unusual uh, um, shot. It's a perspective shot, obviously, but it's at a slightly upward angle or a worm's eye view, meaning you're looking up at the subject, all right? Which also means that your horizon line would be relatively low on your sheet of paper or whatnot. Now, obviously, since I am going to do this in pencil, hopefully, the pencil marks will show i don't know yet but anyway on each of the left and the right side you see two pieces of tape which you might not see is the little black dot i have on each side now i have a 16 inch um ruler okay and what i'll do uh, to my best uh, i do have a longer ruler i just don't want to bring it out but i'll kind of guesstimate where the um the horizon line would be uh, for this guy, it needs to be a little bit higher, but it's okay. Even if it's, it's tilted, it's all right. And I go on the other side and I'll just meet the other line, just like that. Now you should be able to see that technically, but that is the horizon line. I did it kind of dark, so you can see it. Okay, all right. Now, I'm going to put the building in its relation to that horizon line. All right. Um. The way this building's positioned, okay, the horizon line to my left should really technically be way off in the distance, but I cannot do that because there's nothing for me to uh, measure it against, and I don't have that much room. You know, the, the board is only this wide. Okay, so I'll uh, make do with these two as best as I can as I can so I might have to move this the, the uh, picture over per se but what I'm going to do first and foremost is take this um, ruler okay and I'm just gonna sketch a straight vertical line this is going to be the pitch of the roof okay which will probably be somewhere around here Okay, if you guys can see that, it, it'd be somewhere there. And this will be the center of the roof. I should make it uh, come down a little bit below that horizon line. It's not really necessarily sitting on the horizon line. It is a few inches below it. So I'm gonna put it down here. All right. Okay, so the horizon line is here. And once again, this is the center. All right. Okay, what I'm going to do is try to keep it true to form as I can. Um, I'm going to sketch lightly the bottom of the uh, covered bridge. So right about there. Okay. I'm going to go up above. Oh, maybe. I don't want it too crazy looking because of. Um, I don't want it to look really warped. Okay, so I guess I'll put it, the covered bridge, about 
it's gonna look crazy anyway because of the angle but I'll put it right about here this is, will be the top of um, the uh, the uh, cover bridge opening right about there okay I'm gonna do obviously two more straight parallel lines it'll be each side of the um, of the bridge uh, of the of the entrance so it'll just go straight down you might not see it because it's too light I'm gonna go straight down I'll darken it in a second okay now the cover bridge does have an angle on its corner right about oh something like this I'll just put one there now what I'm going to do is use this um, vanishing point to make that curve even on this side so it will be right there and then I will do the angle accordingly right about there so you probably can see the two angles here all right okay now remember that's the opening the actual entrance to the to the uh, the covered bridge now the pitch of the roof is not really that um that steep but before i do that i have to draw or um the edge of the uh the covered bridge okay oh uh, right about here should be fine and i'm gonna come over on the other side and do it slightly smaller because it's, it's it's not as is close to us so it'll be spaced according it's a little more narrow than this guy okay now what I'm also going to do is find a nice little cutoff point uh, for this guy let's have it go oh uh, maybe up here right about now what I'm about to do is actually do the pitch of the roof I might make it a little higher I'll put it right here okay and I'll angle right from where it is I'll angle it because this is a slightly upward here like that now that I did that I gotta match it up match this where it's connected it's right here and I will draw the next angle to meet that dot right here so it's all in proper perspective you follow me all, all of it's in, in proper perspective I know you hear that laughing in the mic okay all right and it's all going toward the left okay you follow me all right okay now what I can do with just this part alone as a matter of fact, I'll have this extended a little bit. Like that. If I can darken, I can darken that in, but I have to make sure everything is pretty much correct. The opening, the opening isn't really the most difficult thing in the world to do. Okay, but before I do that, let's put an yeah, let's put an angle here, and we'll put a slight angle here, and we're gonna repeat that that um, the pitch okay so close as possible like so close as possible we're gonna come here and we put that extra piece of wood right up in there like that all right so it's gonna look like that once again I will darken this so you can see exactly what it is that I'm doing okay now being that it is a covered bridge and we do have another um part to this this guy the perspective uh i'm gonna have to kind of um play with it a little bit i'll keep it like this maybe all right and i'm gonna come on the other side where represent it where the top would be more or less right about maybe right about here I'll just take a line imaginary line just draw it straight down like that okay um let's see I'll go up here like this 
and maybe the, the back end of it will be there okay all right now the way I've got it formed here because it's so close the side of the of the thing goes out this way I'll nudge it a little bit and do the other half down there because it kind of leads off okay and I'll just have it uh, right about there okay now there's a shadow that's going to be cast here and that's fine all right same here it's going to be a sh uh, well the shadow underneath there and you know that's that's cool it's all right um i'm going to come here these are just little little details there's another straight line it's like a piece of wood that's adjoining the corners and i will put them there so now first line that I had made in making this corner is just a support beam there okay there's actually one on the other side and you're gonna only see one because this is the far corner of the of the um the far corner of the building there like that it's essentially it's just a big rectangle okay all right, so as I'm still staring at it, I'm making sure that I got most of the components that really need to be there. That's uh, there. Okay. Now, for it to actually make a little sense, because once again, I'm working with the two dotted sides here. Okay. So what I'll do is I'll just erase this inside here. It doesn't matter if I go right straight through the drawing, it's okay. Just like that, I just erase that middle part. I don't necessarily need this, so I can get rid of that. Okay. None of that's needed. So I'll get rid of that. So what I will do is I'll start to sketch that in a little bit. And I will sketch this in you will definitely see it when it's outlined in black okay it's a thin marker i want the line kind of fine so I'll freehand this little angle right here. I freehand the angle here. It's okay. Then I will do the pitch of the roof next. If you have any small corrections you need to do, you can do it now. Okay. I'm gonna come on the other side, do the other side. Now cover bridges. Once again it's not really the the most difficult thing to do because essentially it is a rectangle okay but long as you get the uh perspective correct you really can't go wrong if you follow the simple rules to it okay so now you you're starting to, to see the uh, the pitch of the roof remember it's a slightly upturned view so you're not going to really see the top of the uh of the roof okay let's go to the straight up and down parallel lines here this is the one the far one on the on the right it's going around the curve there then I'm going to do the partially the center I'll stop right here there's a reason why I'll show you a little bit later why I'll stop there right here too I won't go too much further down than that I made an error right here because I forgot that's all right we'll take care of that um there's nothing really too much in the way here but i'll stop it because there is something in front of this i'll stop it right around in here if i have to go back um, i can easily do that i'm gonna come over here and do essentially the very same thing i'll stop it whoa almost made an error again right there Okay. All right. The 
angles. The angles are right here. Turn it around. Do the same thing on the other side, the other angle opening. There's nothing obscuring this part, so. Like so. So now it's starting to make a little sense to you there. Okay. And once again, it's, it's just simple rules of, of following. So you, you get it, get your bridge to look right. I'll stop it right around here. Because there's something else I have to show than the outside. Get it as close as you possibly can. You want to be as exact as you possibly can for it. Okay. All right. Uh, let's do the back part back here. There's nothing obsc obscuring this part here. Right here. Bring it down. And once again, there's nothing really obscuring that part. There's nothing really obscuring the bottom either. But I do have to stop at a certain point. Stop right around in there. Um, okay. Just like that. Alright. Now I have to wait for it to, to dry up a little bit, so I'm gonna erase a few things. Um, hopefully it doesn't doesn't bleed through too bad. And I'll lightly because now that I covered it with uh, ink, I can erase a few things. It's just me cleaning it up a little bit. I don't need this. I don't need, I don't think I need that area either. So we just clean it up a tad. And really, there you go. Okay. I don't even need that because the main subject of this building is this. Okay. All right. Something different about this building is that it has, because of the way the picture is, is, is uh, composited there's a um <coughs> there's another uh horizon line on here now our vanishing point we have a vanishing point on the left and the right side but there's another vanishing point because there's a stonework on this um particular building and it kind of comes like right at us okay so i will put the stonework um for that guy I'll put it right about here. Well, you should see that dot right there. Okay. Now, you see that I stopped right around in here. Okay. I will do it right about here. Okay. And technically, I just got, I just about got it. Uh, just about right. I'll do it right, right about here. Have it come out a little bit something like that okay now the dot is right here so this is our vanishing point we have some stonework that's coming right in our direction so we'll just come out this way and we'll do another one. now the vanishing point has changed the perspective has changed for this part of the building we got a new perspective spot there's one right there okay all right we have another one same spot, same perspective spot, and we'll have it go out that way. Um, it goes down where the road will be represented, which is about here. Okay, like so. It, it is stonework, so put it right there. Okay, so we do have our, our stonework, which is right here. Okay, so you guys should see that. All right, I know it's, it's odd, it's pretty weird. Don't worry about this, we'll make that disappear. Um, that was one of my, one of my, <clears throat> one of my errors, but it's okay. In our stonework, we have like the little bits of brick in here, but we don't, we're not gonna worry about this because it will be painted over at a later date. All right, but much like that. We can come over here. 
Now, in this area over here, you have to use your perspective. So it's just me moving my ruler around that dot. This helps with the realism of your of your uh, your painting. As it comes toward us, the bricks get a little larger. Once again, when they come closer to us, they appear to be a little bigger. I'm gonna just move my ruler there, just like that. Okay. Um, what else? Actually, if I have some thick white, I can get rid of that. And I do have thick white, so hold on for one second. I'll get rid of that, that, that part. And I do have some opaque painting pens um, that I handle a little error like I've done. Because it just disturbs me looking at it. So let's see if I can if I can get rid of some of that. I've used this on something else and it's kind of got that color rubbed on it. Yeah. That's really too bad. Oh well, so much for uh, using white, right? It makes it worse. So I'm gonna have to use the old fashioned white paint. I have another one. I don't think it'll cover it though. Okay. We'll come here. Yeah, you guys can still see it. That's cool. I know where it is. So I'll just lightly sketch it in real fast. And I'm following the, as you can see, my ruler is right on the dot. I'm following it that way. Coming around. Okay. I'll just freehand this. It's just quicker. I'm following this right around like, like that. Right here. <coughs> right here is the same thing. And I can just sketch the uh, the brickwork while I'm here. I'll just sketch the brickwork. Once again, it's following that dot because we changed our vanishing point. So, this is a brand new vanishing point. And even though we have three vanishing points, the painting will still look pretty much natural. Okay, because you got more than one object going towards the vanishing point. This is going towards the vanishing point. This is going towards another vanishing point. So, we're dealing with three vanishing points and a slightly warms eye view of this um, of this uh, covered bridge here all right let's uh, let's do this too because you need to add once again a little bit of realism I'm gonna have to come here and, and, and sketch in the inner plank of the uh, of the board of the uh, the frame all right I'm gonna come here I'm gonna do it again here I'm just guesstimating, hopefully that's right. Okay. And then go straight up and down to meet the top edge right here. Okay. That's fine. We're going to take that angle. I'm trying to see if we can do that. Let's see here. It should make it right about here. So I come here at this angle, meet that, meet that inner angle. We're pretty good. We're good with that. And once again, you follow your horizon or your vanishing point again. Just like that. So now you got the inside angle of the door of the opening there. All right. Okay. Now that I've, I've uh, pretty much done that, I'm going to come with my vanishing point. Now, this is what's the bottom of the, the rectangle. We're going to go inside a little bit. 
and it would be more or less the start of the actual road and I will do it at that angle right about in here okay just like that now we have um this is actually is a road so um, being that it, it is a road I'll put it's like a slight patch of grass um, in there I'll kind of put it right around it. I'll lightly sketch it in with this marker right around it in this area and I'll make it a little wider here it's a little closer to us it's actually around in this area just like that okay so this is the actual the actual uh, physical road itself okay all right and it goes slightly past right here and it goes slightly past right there okay and this would be a little bit of grass this would be a little bit of grass there's a whole bunch of grass and everything going on here okay all right now because of the angle <clears throat> and the way the picture is here you have an inside you're looking a little bit of the inside of this it's not completely uh, in black you follow me so what we're gonna do is go to the other side where you see this line red meets we're gonna go over here and we're gonna quickly sketch out the inside frames of the windows I'll start with the top of the windows which would be probably right here and I'll start with a straight line going down just like that straight line come down a little further another straight line just like that all right after that what we'll do is put in the uh, the actual window frames I'll come right about here so one window frame here one window frame there that's one full window we're gonna do it again right about there all right we're gonna skip a little bit and we're gonna do another set we have uh, beams of wood in there too all right so we're gonna go from this we're concentrating pretty much on the inside of this thing I'll go like this and I'll put the bottom of this right here all right <clears throat> so that's basically the inside of it okay once again we're still matching everything in its perspective okay so where we got the skip at we got a uh, window window and we skip we got a beam of wood right here so right here we're gonna go past go straight down it's like this all right we're gonna bring that beam is near us so we're gonna go right from this corner we're gonna go out a little bit okay you're not gonna be able to really see it that well we're gonna go straight we'll stop it right here and we got another beam uh, right here driving downward just like that all right so you got one beam in there and we're gonna do yet another um, another beam right here I'll have it come out a little bit and we got yet another beam right here once again everything is involved in its perspective all right now that I did that we'll just erase some spots in there just like so all right now let's do we got like a look a, a weird slat of wood we'll put it right about here I'll put this in fairly dark so this wood is in front like that and then we need the bottom part of the wood right here just like that and put another angle so it does have a, another angle of wood partially obscuring the windows that's okay just like that okay we actually have another one we do have another one I'll do another angle 
I'll do it a little bit darker so you guys can see it. Here's the one that's against the wall or closest to the wall. We have we have another one right about here. Okay, and then we got yet another. Okay, and yet we have another one right about here. And do it at an angle, just like that. So we got another piece of wood, um, angled uh, wood, somewhere around there like that. And we'll erase what's in between it there. Okay. Well, if this wood is a little bit too long, we'll stop it right here. Just like that. And we'll get rid of that because it was too long. There. Much like that. So it's definitely the inside. And yes, it's covering some of that some of that window there. Okay. And if you want to be really exact, you got yet another one out freehanded. You know, because you're not gonna see much of it. But it's like right about there. Okay. Now, in doing that, you can now get your shadows going here. Uh we'll start it here. And it comes out around um out slanted comes down comes out down slanted comes back there there then there there and there okay i'm gonna put an x where it should be dark okay it's fairly dark where i put the x's all these okay is shadow that's where I'll put these X's at all that is shadow all of this will be seen okay all right now that I've done that we we'll take off mr. marker here I'll use this and we will sketch all of that in okay once again it depends on how detailed you want to do your covered bridge. This is all involving that per same perspective that I was talking about. And if you do it right, it will look pretty wild. It will look pretty cool. I'm doing it a part at a time, so I'm just doing the... Uh, I'll do the wood first. I tend to work a little quickly. Yeah, I'm trying to, it, it's weird when you're doing a pre-recording because you want to work quickly, but you also want to go slow enough where people can understand what the heck you're doing. All right, some of this I am freehanding because it's, it's quicker and it's easier and I've, I've been doing it for a while. So I can pretty much freehand this stuff. I am, I'm freehanding some of this wood here because it's just easier for me, it's quicker. And I'm just really just going over the, tracing over the line. Okay, it's quicker for me to do so. Now, if you can't trace over them, then it's, it's best for you to use your ruler. Okay. Once again, I've been doing it for a minute, so. And I'm just tracing over where the shadow is going to be in black. Just like that. So you guys kind of see um, what's going on, how it's happening. All right. Yes, I'm going to freehand the windows because once again, it's just easier for me to do it. It's quicker for me to do, do it this way. Okay. But you're just going over what you've done in pencil. All right. All right. 
Now I have to make sure I got everything correctly, of course, before I bring out the eraser. Okay, we do have a line here to denote where the road is. There. All right, I think I've gotten what I need to get um, for this. All right. Now the the um, the brickwork here. Okay, it's um, almost like cobblestone. You don't really see it on the top. Here, let me do this too while I'm thinking about it. Let's do it this way. I'll freehand it. It's basically the angled lines from the vanishing point. Okay. All right. Now you would figure these lines will go down, but it's it's not. It's not because you got this weird cobblestone thing happening right in here like this. It's got this happening. Okay. Yep. It's got this weird cobblestone thing going on. Alright. Make them about as random as you can. Alright. Just like so. Um, just like this put the grout in there just like that I know it's like kind of crazy to look at but it is that's what it is but you know you have uh, bridges of all shapes and, and kinds going on you know so uh, let's do it one this way and like that and then we'll do one here like this we'll do one here like this and like that we'll do a small one right here like that and we'll come around like that and that's the way it looks okay all right as i'm looking at it here i think we're more or less just about um finish doing generally that type of work with it all right now we'll just just erase some mess just like this just get rid of it all right just like that and there we go don't worry about the don't forget, don't worry about the X's because they'll be covered in, in black. All right. Okay. And remember, I, I have a picture with me so I can look at the, continu continuously look at the picture as a guide. All right. Okay. Essentially, more or less, more or less, the building is somewhat done. Okay. Now that we've done most of the, you know, the main parts, we'll go to where it will be represented in shadow. For this all right do it go on pencil and you have the uh, basic shadow coming coming here you got a kind of a thicker shadow on this side like this all right um, the windows we do have windows on this side and I'll um, here and let's do it this way Let's do it this way. I'm gonna find a nice little spot for where it would be. Right about right about here. For the top, we'll come here. We just, we're just taking one of the windows and we're matching it up. So they're approximately the right height. We'll, okay. um, We'll sketch out the uh, windows real quick here. Now, in doing the windows, you can't really keep them the same size. The further they go away from you, the smaller they get. So keep that in mind. And they, they slightly get smaller. Okay. 
Now, I know this might be a little time consuming for you, but it, you know, if you do it well ahead of time, when it comes time for you to actually do the painting and stuff, you can mask this guy and you can, you, you know, since your, your subject is painting, then you can continue it that way. I'll, I'll eke one more in, in there. Like that. Well, I don't need to do no more than that. What I'll do is just darken them in. Okay. And once again, I'm reaching, I'm going for the, the, uh, the vanishing point. Just be mindful where they are, okay? This is a very narrow, um, narrow tipped pin. I don't need to have a solid black line because it's going to be mostly covered in paint. All right. Yep, you guys can still see it. And I'm just going to freehand the straight downward lines because it just helps the video go along a little faster. Okay. All right. Just like that. All right. Okay. If you want to add more detail, more realism to it, obviously you're going to have, um, um, it's three, you know three dimensions so you know your window has a side to it it's very tricky because you just about see maybe the top but you kind of don't so you it's you you don't really have to put that in there you just get, put a double line there and it will give the impression of i'll just freehand it here. it's just going to give the impression of double windows or the frames anyway Okay, so you don't really have to do the tops or the bottoms. And that's basically basically it. Now, the shadow, okay, the shadow of the frame, of the roof line, would be right around in here. Okay, so it'd be like a X is here, X is here, X all down in here, because they're going to be, it's going to be dark there. All right. Okay. Like I say, it, it's a slightly raised um proportion of the uh of the building okay all right let's see if there anything else i need to do before i uh mask this thing i don't think so i can make this center line a little more pronounced all right something like that there Okay, now, depending on how much detail you want, this particular, um, this particular long bridge, whatever you want to call it, it has wooden slats, but the slats are, the slats are horizontal, and I'm going to make them pr pretty, pretty slender. I'm not gonna have them go to be too thick. I'm gonna just go across them pretty quickly. All right. And once again, it all depends on how detailed you, you want this thing. All right, really up to you. I don't have to make them all super dark lines. It's just represent, representing where, <clears throat> where the slats are. And it also helps in your perspective, makes it look great. Okay. Once again, I don't have to do every single one super detailed. Won't be necessary. But give the impression that you got wood slats on this. Okay. 
when we get to the other side, it'd be pretty much the same height. Okay. Going on the other side too, because if you notice, they're coming from one side of um, this, oops, of the sleds, I forgot one. There. Could you freehand these? Yeah, yeah, you can, but it might not come out that great. So you're best to kind of do it with a ruler. Okay. It takes a bit of time, but trust me, you'll love the end result. So don't give up. Don't say it's too much. It's too this, it's too that. You don't have to do this on camera like I'm doing it. Do it off camera. You got a little extra time, whatever. And you just get it done. You'd be surprised how fast you can get it done too. Now I'm talking to you, explaining this. All right, how it's done, the process, I'm showing it to you. I'd have been done already. <clears throat> so, much like that, okay. Obviously I should make these darker now that I've, I've I'll make a few of them a little darker. Come this way. Just like that. That'll help it out a little bit. You do the same <coughs> you do the same exact thing on the other side. Okay. Same thing. On the other side here. I'll start from right about here. I'll just take it lightly. Just like that. I don't really, it doesn't matter. bottom of the building it's got to match naturally okay and you got uh, you got little bits of it in between here too which can be a bother <laughs> depends on how once again how your patience level is okay I'll skip a couple of them couple spaces because I can freehand the rest. I'll just give up starting and an end point to these. Alright, so I did a quick starting and end point. And then I'll just kind of match one close to the bottom, match one close to the top, and put it in there like that. really not going to notice it too much when you put the rest of them in there. Just like so. Okay. All right. I am <clears throat> using a permanent marker. Okay. And once it's fully dry and it doesn't take long for it to dry. That's it. Just erase it, and there you have it. Okay, all right. Now that I've shown you really how it's done, how you do it, if you wanna um, color these black, the spaces in there black, you can. It's uh, truly up to you if you wanna do that. I'll do it uh, for this one. I'll show you the the whole thing. I don't need the ruler for anything now. I don't believe. I do have a thick, thicker permanent marker. Okay. And I'll probably end up freehanding it because once again, it's just quicker for me to do so. 
I'll come here and be as careful and as close as possible. Now I'm doing this on watercolor paper. Permanent markers are alcohol based so it has a tendency to spread. And so I'm doing it extremely light. Okay, because I really don't want it to spread too much. And I've been doing this type of thing for a while, so and uh, I got some control left in me. Pretty much do it decently freehand. A little bit of control. Okay, we do the awning right here. The, the shadow part. Sometimes it just takes a little dot because, like I said, this stuff spreads. So be careful. Which is why I'm not. As you see, I'm painting it or I'm filling it in with strokes. I get it as close to the edge as possible because remember, this stuff does spread. I've been doing it for a while so I kind of know where to go with it how far to go just like that all right you can do it once you get accustomed to it you do it quickly all right all right we're going to come in here and do the inside shadow careful know where your know where your um your points are with it okay and make sure you keep your windows uh clear <clears throat> for it for it This reminds me of a book I'm supposed to be doing. Cause I'll be inking it in myself. So I hope that this lesson, this tutorial helps you out and any others that would like to try something like this. Now, even though I went by a picture, because of the perspective angles of uh, that particular picture, an example I'm showing you, it's uh, it's similar but not exact because I got it turned. But um, the, the, most of it, the detail and everything is pretty much spot on. It's there. All right. But there you go. I don't believe I have to. Yeah, I do. My bad. My bad. I got these guys. Now, once again, I could probably get away with a little bit of line on the top. Um, yeah, I bet you I can get away with that. It doesn't really need it, but aesthetically, I think it'll look cool. So I'll pop it up there anyway. It doesn't. I don't think it really needed it, but whatever. There. All right, I gave it that. All right, that's just kind of a judgment call. Truly up to you. All right. Um, I think that's really it. I don't think I have to add anything else. The sunlight obviously is coming off of this side. Okay. It's showing a bit here, but you can see 
the sunlight's coming this way because you still got a little bit of that. So it's 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 um it's like it's be behind my hand beaming in and it catches this. Okay. So you would actually judge the time of day judging by how much that shadow will cover the inside of the barn. Okay. It's just the way the barn is positioned. You got me? Okay. All right. I do believe that's really um that's really it as far as the barn is concerned. Okay. Uh or not barn, I'm sorry, the covered bridge is concerned. We do have I can put that in there real fast because it is is it is sitting on very heavy um, cinder block things um, you're not gonna see it on the front of course but it is on the rear of the building and so I will and it's in uh, this weird perspective type thing I'll put it right here just like that and I'll have it go uh, oh, I don't know how far down I'll go. Let's give it a straight line. We'll just give the straight line right about here, and something like that. And maybe, well, let's see, because it's a covered bridge, so we got a mound of land right about here, like that, and so we'll. We'll uh, we'll put it right about here. Cause it's on a like a cinder block looking deal. All right. And we'll have it come about this far in there like that. Okay. All right. Uh, we have bushes. I'll just kind of sketch them in. Well, we do got bushes here. Okay. We actually have, this is, this is going to be the grass, the foreground grass here. I can just kind of rough that in that you know foreground now um i don't really need a straight line here because we already established that we'll we'll use it anyway we got like cutesy little trees right here um and we got a little here and probably something right here like that little cutesy trees down there all right right around in here we got this really nice looking tree it kind of comes up like that and we got these interesting bushes and stuff happening with it i'll put them in uh, later but i just want to establish where that tree is um we got a nice looking tree here too but we got more bushes really uh right around in here Right on it, it's bushes there. Okay. And then we got like trees all up in here. We got a tree in here. Um, a lot of grass and such all around there. And we'll get that taken care of a little bit later. But the next, very next thing we're gonna do before we sign off. Depending on how um, detailed you want this, okay. Uh, we're going to mask it. Uh, all right. Now, I'm probably going to mask. Probably the, uh, we're going to mask quite a bit of this. We're going to mask the rock, the stonework. Obviously, we're going to mask the building. And then that's it. Everything else will be, will be painted around, on, around that. All right. So. That being said, we just take some two-inch tape. Two-inch wire tape. We'll do it like this. Ah, uh, right about here, like that. All right. 
make sure you have long enough tape to do the especially if you're painting at an angle if you got the tape at an angle all right you just continue the angle like this make sure you get the whole thing and, and you cover it just cover it all up you can straight you can straight, straighten it up after you get the bottom of the of the bridge here okay so if you do this right about here After you do a little bit of that then you can come here and just finish it off now with this little piece down below you don't see it until I back away this little square piece here you can just continue the angle right here and that that'll take care of that all right and here tape is wide enough you just need a little piece And I'll put it right about here, right on the top of, of that marker line, right there. All right, just like so. You take an exacto knife. All right. I'll start from this side. You take your exacto knife. Make sure you press it on there pretty good. So you don't get any surprises. Now my exacto knife is a little dull. I kind of prefer it that way. I don't cut through everything, but this is double layer um, tape. Now, if you come across a piece of tape that's covering each other, um, you're gonna have to press down fairly decent to get to cut through that. But if you got, if you, I got double um, watercolor paper, so I'm good. You got some double tape right in here. You just press down fairly well, and you just keep going with it okay oh uh, we'll do the bottom half here now as i'm doing this and i'm talking to you you know that the tape is coming right off the paper here all right i'll just keep going in with it whatever it's all good um we come here uh come here i'll stop it right where the, the road is here just like that <coughs> We're gonna continue in on the bottom of the page here. Keep coming down, go right off the off the page. So that's one down. You're gonna come here, start from where the bottom of the house is. Go straight down, go across. Because you only want the covered bridge really. In the stonework. I'm pressing pretty good here. So I can hopefully, hopefully, get it in one shot. This is why having a sharp exacto knife works wonders. But if you don't, if you got one that's a little dull like me, you might want to put a little elbow grease in there. But once again, I glued two pieces of, of watercolor paper together. All right, so I'm able to give it a little, little, little tug, as you might say. Then slowly peel off the tape and it should come off without any real issues <clears throat> okay it all should just come right off I know I already got that spot so I don't know why it didn't come up there as you see it should come right off okay come on the other side and hopefully it goes through that double portion of tape. Yes, it did. Yes, it did. Good. Come right across. Just like that. Okay. Come on the bottom here. And it should just come right up. No issues. In a perfect world, no issues. Come here on the other side. Peel it. Come here. I'll just take my exacto knife and slightly go underneath the tape, giving it a pull up. Okay, just be careful with it. Now I cut this pretty deep, so it came off perfectly. There you go, it's all masked and ready. Now, you can change your mind about the background if you want to. It's definitely up to you, but that's not really the uh, point of this video. It was really showing you um, perspective. 
MK. He was really showing you perspective and how to do it. Now you know why I use this light colored tape. It's just a two inch tape. You get a pretty sharp, pretty decent exacto knife and you know, you're able to do what you, you know, you can do what you do with it. All right. Um, as far as the uh, windows are concerned and such, technically all of these windows should have been black instead of just a framework, but that's okay. Um, if I want to add the, the darkness in the windows, then I'll probably use some color to probably add it in there. Or maybe I'll use the uh, reflection of the green and everything. Because it is technically not too difficult a picture, really. A lot of it's just green and, and stonework in the road and just bushes and grass or whatever. So, but there you go. Um, perspective, okay. I'll show you, I'll pan this out. There, her uh, ver vanishing point, vanishing point. This would be your horizon line. Okay, so we, we're looking at the bridge slightly elevated because the horizon line is a little bit on the low side. Okay, all right. And then we have another one. We had another one right here. Okay, see, we had a vanishing point here, vanishing point here, and a vanishing point here. The vanishing point here took care of this, took care of that, took care of that, and took care of this. That's the only reason why we use the third vanishing point, because of the angle of the way um, the road was. So the photographer probably sat right, right on one of these, right up one of these stones here, and took a picture of the bridge. All right, which gives it a very unusual look and uh, vantage point. All right, okay. Um, yeah, everything else uh, can be painted flat out. All right. Okay, thank you very much. I hope this helped you all. I shall see you when I see you.